do it and do that. Okay, before we go further, this is probably the most dangerous video I have ever made. This is the type of video where a helicopter lands in the street in front here and guys with military credentials and big guns get out while a skinny dude with glasses and slippers sits on a chair while they hammer your head against the wall and he's giggling his ass off. Okay. So, if you have a model that's done and painted, please just switch off this video and go do something else. This is only applicable on a bare 3D print, okay, as it comes off the machine, and it is only, I've only tested it, listen carefully, on PEG and on ASA. I've never done it on PLA, I've never done it on ABS, so I don't know what it's going to do. But surely, all of us that print will know that you will have a bag full of misprints and stuff that you can actually go play on. The other thing is, this works on resin as well, which is where I actually originally found out that it works well. So, if you have... A sand, you still have to sand. Don't get me wrong. But if there's places that's hard to sand and you can't get to, and you know, you put a, a base coat on or whatever and you see that, oh, hell, there's still marks there. This video is for you. Only problem is you can't just spray there. You got to do the whole thing. And it's a volatile and dangerous way of doing it your success ratio will be 75%. I've had funny stuff happen before that I, I don't know why I did it. It works different on the amount of time you wait between coats or whatever. Now, the one that worked for me in the past plenty times is the following one. Remember I said to you, we had this, this sprint. Now, I, I don't know if you can see there. You see the lines on it. We, we, still, we still didn't fix this. I don't know why it does that or how it happens. But if you have imperfections like that, that is very, very slight and not, why is it not, you know, not very pronounced. You can see there, okay? Then this whole thing I'm going to show you now will work for you because this was the nose that I showed you the previous time and as you can see do not mind that there because I'll tell you now what that is that's in the video later what that is as you can see then this is um this is obviously a shiny coat so it will absolutely magnify any imperfections all right but that was the nose I did not sand it I didn't touch it the top there is the other flip side of the coin, which I will get to now. All right, but first, just let's just get to the whole idea behind it. I've got this piece here. Now, you can see there that it's still, this was a misprint, okay? You can see on the roof there, this was the problem. So I did not sand this, I didn't touch this. I actually sprayed some crap on here just to show you that how well this whole method works and how much it can actually take away because this side was what the print looked like okay the show normal print lines this one was extremely crappy there was something wrong with our filament okay and that was just after i've done whatever i'm going to show you now okay now there is rules if you paint with rust-oleum Rust-Oleum is actually a furniture paint. So this stuff pulls into plastic, which is brilliant for 3D prints. And rust is probably going to sue me and I'm going to end up in jail or whatever. But let this be known. Not all their primers are the same. And that, not all their paints behave the same. 
all right? I've tried different color primers. The flat gray, this one, is the only one you use when you do this method. It's the only one. You don't use any other primer. All right. The clear coat, you use satin or you use matte. Let me tell you one thing. If you have a gloss clear coat from Rustoleum anywhere in your stash, take it now and throw it in the bin. It's a volatile paint that. I don't know why I've had a lot of crap with it. Paint lifting, it not, I've never had it with a satin, I've never had it with a matte. Okay, right. So this is what works for me. Okay, if you have your print like this, what you do is you spray a coat of matte gray, primer, flat gray, and you let it dry. Within an hour, you spray a second coat. Don't take longer than that. Within an hour, 45 minutes in an hour, spray a second coat. Another 45 minutes, spray a third coat. Put it down, put the thing down, leave it until tomorrow. Leave it for a couple of hours, let the base coats dry properly. And now here comes the trick. Then over that base coat, without spraying any other color, you squirt it with a, a layer of satin clear. Give it 20 minutes or a half an hour and give it another coat, all right? Stand back, check what it does, check if it's, this stuff is thick enough to fill the gaps in a 3D print. Trust me on that. It's like a filler. Let it dry. Check again, if you have to do a third coat, do a third coat. Do not touch it at any point because it will make a finger mark until it's completely dry. Then, when it's dry, and not just touch dry, dry, dry. Leave it a day if you have to. Then you go back with your flat gray primer, okay? Because the paint will not adhere to a clear coat, but the primer will. And you just give it one more coat and let it dry. And this, boys, I cannot state this enough. This is very important. If you decide, take a piece of paper and write this down. If you decide to continue with rust as a cover coat, then take the gloss or whatever the hell it is you're going to put on there, spray it on one go, light layers, you know, until you've covered it. Be careful because it's now very, very smooth. It will run. But cover it nicely and let it dry. And then from there on, you are stuffed. Because after this whole thing's done and you got your gloss coat on you, you cannot put any rust clear coat on it ever again. Ever again. Because what will happen is it will fish eye like I, yeah, it will fish eye like that. I did that specifically to show you. This one actually came out not too bad, but it'll make little fish eyes everywhere like that, okay, because um, the paint, the, the clear cut doesn't want to adhere, it's, it's just too smooth there, I think, I don't know. However, if you've decoled then and want, done whatever you want it to, what does work is Mr. Colors um, self-leveling uh, thinner with their either gloss or, that works, goes over, it doesn't make marks. It's fine. Um, you can also use any acrylic-based um, clear coat over it. But then you need to understand as well, if, if you weather or do everything, anything to that paint after that, you got to, if you had an acrylic coat over there, you got to weather with acrylics. You can't weather with enamel washes or whatever. It will just take it off. All right, so be aware of that. If you do not want to continue for a top coat with Rust-Oleum, there is a trick. 
you cannot, I love Tamiya. You cannot go now and just spray Tamiya over your um, Rustolium base coat. A primer. It just doesn't work. What will inevitably be happen is this. I don't know if you will be able to see that. You see those little spots there? Fine little minute spots that look like dust. It's not dust. It's the acrylic paint reacting with the solvent in the Rustolium. All is not lost though. If you've done like on the previous one, your last coat of Rustoleum primer over your two or three or four coats of clear, and it's dry. And you want to continue afterwards with the Mia or any other acrylic paint, then you go and you paint an acrylic primer over the flat glass, flat gray layer, like I did here. This is um, Green Stuff World's primer, very, very good primer. Okay. And then on top of that, you can go with your, um, this is still wet, I just sprayed it now just to show you. Then you can go over that with your Tamiya paint. It'll go on thin and nice and there will be no, look, I've got some runs here because I was in a hurry and it was too thin. Um, but you'll see, you won't have any of the dust particles in it. If you look under the runs there, you'll see it's nice and clear because the Tamiya doesn't, you know, it needs an acrylic um, base coat. All right. So that's basically that, dudes. And this way, you can smooth. And also, you can see, even on this bad print, there where the door handles are and stuff, it does not pull. If you do it in thin coats, you do not actually um, give up detail. You see those little marks, these little things here? Now, those are very, very fine. I mean, they... They are very, very fine. And you can still see the bolt head on it there. Why is it not focusing? You can still, you see there, you can still see the bolt head on it. Nothing really went overly crazy pulling like with any other um, mist or that stuff that you paint over the 3D prints. Those things, none of it, none of it, uh, you know, leaves your detail unscathed. This does. You can see over the door handles there and everything. Everything's perfect. Uh, I just got rid of the marks. All right. So, dudes, that's basically my story. That is one way of getting rid of imperfections on a 3D print is with a clear coat. It's the best filler for, from Rustoleum, obviously. Not any other Rustoleum. Um, it's a very, very good filler for imperfections. But you've got to take your time with it. Look, it's all in the technique. And you will, please, please do it. Take all your misprints and stuff and put it one side and just practice on that and, and see what works for you. But it is a way of, you know, getting rid of really bad surface stuff. Or um, even, you know, if you don't want to get into a corner to, there's a door like there, there's a door. You can't get in yet to sand, you know. You can't get in there to sand. So that basic roughness there, um, you can fill with the, the clear coat. Okay. And then from there on, everything will be hunky-dory. So just make sure that you practice first before you put this on the model. And if it doesn't work, don't let me know. I don't want to know it. I'm moving. Um, if I, the first comment I get it, I just stuffed up my model. I am moving and I'm closing the channel and I'm running. <laughs> okay, dudes, that's basically it. So have fun. Have fun. Tell me what happens. Tell me what happens. Tell me what you think. Because I think I'm the only dude in the world that does this. Um, and tell me that I'm not an idiot. Okay, cool. Dudes, see you later. Goed jullie tot ziens.